Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape, brought to you by your Richfield gasoline dealer and the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York. Marketers of Richfield gasolines, motor oils, and other petroleum products. Look for the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Tonight, we escape to a gigantic rocket ship about to be shocked into space on man's first voyage to Mars. As Ray Bradbury tells it in his famous science fiction story, Mars is heaven. The project is magnificent, overwhelming and tremendous. We return you now to the scene of the takeoff in the desert of New Mexico. Go ahead, New Mexico. Thank you, London. This is Stuart Novins back in New Mexico. I'm standing here on the Great Steel Observation Platform overlooking the takeoff stand. As the moment for departure draws nearer, the whole area has been flooded with artificial light. It bathes a spaceship in a kind of, of silver luminescence and surrounding it, engulfing it, this subdued hysteria of hundreds of thousands of people come to see the start of this incredible voyage of 18 men in the rocket ship, The Venture. It's standing there pointing upward, pointing toward the heavens, and in a few minutes it will bloom out into great flowers of heat and color, shocked into space on man's first voyage to Mars. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, prayers are being said for these 18 men in their ship, the first men, the first ship to dare the voyage to another planet. Prayers are being said by every creed in mosques and churches and synagogues the world over. We take you now to the Basilica of St. Paul's in Rome. This is New Mexico again. We're sorry to cut in, but that roar you're hearing, the roar of the crowd, it's the moment we've been waiting for. I can see the crew of the venture walking up the catwalk that leads to the spaceship. The men are entering, and now, now the escape hatch is closed. Now the men are in the ship. This silence, this, this great, awful silence of the crowd, it's the voiceless prayer that's in every heart. They're about ready now. Some lights from the ship just blinked on and off. It's a signal. In just a few seconds, a few more, stand by. Stand by. They're gone. The venture. It's out of sight. Log entry, U.S. rocket ship venture. One hour out from Earth, destination Mars. Pass Keneally heaviside layer without incident. Rate of speed, 450,000 miles per hour. With planet Mars at its closest point to Earth, 35 million miles, calculate duration of voyage to be roughly three and a half days. Captain John Blackmaster. Log entry, U.S. rocket ship, the venture. 12 hours out from Earth. While navigating supertensioned atmospheric forces, Fort Shield generator broke down. Replaced by booster. Yes? Lieutenant Lustig reporting, sir. Come in, Pete. Have the report on the trajectory, sir. I'll put it on my desk. Pete? Yes, sir. How do you feel? Feel? Why, just wonderful, sir. Sitting up there in the observation turret, I... I don't know just how to say it. The sights, I mean. Moon so close and Earth looking like... <laughs> and Mars, sir. Sir? Do you really think we'll make it? Who is it? 
Dr. Hankson, Captain. May I come in? Sure, Sam. Uh, you weren't asleep, were you, John? No, no, Sam. Just sitting here thinking. Well, don't think about it too much. Sleep instead. You need all the sleep you can get. Who sleeps? Who sleeps and has no way of knowing what's waiting for him? Look at it through the porthole, Sam. Mars. How would you describe it, that glittering blob of red? That's good enough. Will it consume us? Spew our dust out into space? <laughs> Maybe it's the Elysian fields, all charm and sweetness and moonlight shining on the restless dead. Which will it be, Sam? I don't know. All I know is that they told me I was an expert in space medicine. At Randall Field on a plot of ground called Texas, they told <laughs> me that. That's all I know. What are you doing up? You're supposed to be in a sack. Well, I'll tell you, Captain. Sometimes a man can't sleep. That happens to me sometimes. So I just wander through the ship, check on the boys, see that they're tucked in properly. <laughs> That's what you were doing with me, huh? No, no, no. I, uh, well, I just... Uh... What made them do it, Sam? What made them volunteer? Man keeps looking for something. There are no new frontiers now, only new worlds. And there'll always be men who want to conquer them. Log entry, U.S. rocket ship venture. 78 hours out from Earth. Approaching gravitational field of Mars. Atmospheric conditions similar to Earth's. Log entry, U.S. rocket ship venture. 79 hours out from Earth. Have this moment landed on Mars at 1,700 hours. We made it. Chemical analysis indicated on ship's instrument shows air to be breathable and will sustain human life. Gravity comparable with that of Earth's. Ready, John? Yes. How are the men in sick base, Sam? Happy. They're all right, John. You ready? First one thing. Captain to crew, Captain to crew, your attention. We have landed on Mars. No man is to leave this ship under penalty of court-martial. Dr. Hingston and I will make a brief reconnaissance. Crew will proceed with repair of ship's hull. As you know, our ship is armed against any possible aggression. I can't impress it upon you too strongly. No man will leave this ship until Dr. Hingston and I ascertain that we are not in a hostile world. That is all. Let's go, Sam. You first, Captain. It's your honor. You, the first man from Earth to walk on Mars. This, this grass. It's a well-kept lawn. John, look over there. A house. A Victorian house. Colored glass and scrolls and everything. I don't believe it. Come on. Sam, look at these. Two iron deer on this lawn. <laughs> we had a pair of these when I was a kid. Sam, you hear that? That, that piano from that house. Sam, this isn't Mars. It, it can't be. It just can't be. It can't be, John, but it is. Welcome to Mars. Perhaps you know that skilled research scientists have worked for many years to develop new high-octane components for gasoline. Components to give your car higher Antinoch performance and greater power. But do you know that from this research has come xylene? Xylene, one of the highest octane components in gasoline history. Now, listen. Today, every gallon of the famous Richfield gasoline contains xylene. Xylene in Richfield gasoline helps give your car new lively pickup, new high antinoch power, and new gasoline economy. Furthermore, there are two great Richfield gasolines with xylene. That means you can select the right Richfield gasoline to give your particular car the finest performance at lowest cost per mile. Richfield high-octane gasoline at regular price is specially refined for the average motor. Richfield ethyl, ethyl at its best, meets the requirements of the newest motors of the highest compression. 
And remember, both Richfield gasolines contain xylene. Stop where you see the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Get famous Richfield gasoline with xylene. And now we return you to Escape. What did I say, Sam? Somewhere back there in space? That Mars was the Elysian Fields, all sweetness and charm. No, John, it isn't that. It's what you see. A world like ours on Earth. And this? A small town with good air in it. A small town like the one I was born in. Same smell of flowers, the same sounds. You think that the civilizations of two planets can progress at the same rate, develop in the same way? I do now. <laughs> well, I don't. Oh, look at that house. A Victorian house on Mars? You expect me to believe that? A house with lace curtain windows, with port swings, with something that sounds like a piano and probably is a piano, playing beautiful Ohio. You believe all that? I believe it. I admit it's strange, but I believe it. Strange nuts. It's impossible. We're going back to the ship. Wait, wait, John. It could be. It could be that there are similar patterns of thought, movement, civilization on every planet in our system. Maybe we're on the threshold of the great psychological and metaphysical discovery of our time. Maybe we... Well, go on, Sam. Maybe this proves the existence of God. Not everyone needs proof. I don't. But how else can you explain all this? John, it, it fills me with terror and joy. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I admit it looks peaceful and cool. Pretty much like Council Bluffs, where I was born. Well, that was a good, quiet place, Council Bluffs, Iowa. I'm... Do you see that, Sam? Do you hear it? I see it and hear it. It's there. A horse and carriage going down the street. Suppose, just suppose that by accident or something, we landed on a planet in space in another time. Suppose that this is Earth, 30 or 50 years ago. Maybe we got lost in the dimensions. Uh, what do you think, Sam? So much like my hometown, that house, that room up there with a beaded lamp near the window. When I was a kid, I used to sleep and do my lessons in a room just like that. I'd lie there in the night, and I'd be awake, and I could hear the freight trains across the river, and... John, do you hear that? I hear it. Let's go. Where? We're going up to that house and ask questions. Where else? Come on. Yes, can I help you? I beg your pardon, but uh, we want... If you're selling uh, something, I'm much too busy and I haven't time. We're all at supper. Oh, wait. Wait, wait don't go. Uh, what town is this? What do you mean, what town is this? How could you be in a town and not know what town it was? Oh, I beg your pardon, but we're strangers here. We're from Earth. And uh, we want to know how this town got here, how you got here. Are you census taker? <laughs> no. We, well, what we... do you want, then? How long has this town been here? It was built in 1868. Is this a game? Oh, no, no, not a, a game. Uh, look, uh, try to understand. We're from Earth. From where? From Earth. Where's that? Uh, the, the Earth? What? Uh, out of the ground, do you mean? <laughs> no, from the planet Earth. Um, come out on the porch, please, and I'll show you. No, I won't come out there. You're evidently quite mad from the sun. Uh, let me try, John. Uh, lady, uh, we came in a flying ship across space among the stars. We came from the third planet from the sun, Earth, to this planet, which is Mars. Now, do you understand? You're touched from the sun, too. Go away now before I call my husband from his supper. He'll beat you up. That's what he'll do. But uh, this is Mars, isn't it? This is Green Lake, Ohio, on the continent of America, surrounded by the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans on a place called the world, or sometimes the Earth. Go away now, go away! Let's take a walk, Sam. Yeah. Sam. Yeah? There's something going on here, something we don't understand. I want you to go back to the ship. If anything out of the way happens, lift the ship and get out. But, John... That's an order, Sam. All right, if it's an order. John, look. 
Look at that woman walking toward us. Oh, what about her? Well, she looks like... Sam! She... Oh, Sam, you look fine, so grown up. Sam, don't you know me? It's your grandma, your old grandma. Grandmother. What's wrong, Sam? This is a happy meeting. And who is this friend of yours? Uh, th th this is Captain John Black. John, uh, this is my grandmother. Grandmother? So help me. So help me, John, this is my grandmother. She's dead. Died 30 years ago. But this is my grandmother. Well, there's no sense standing here on the street. You just come along to my house. We've so much to talk about. You too, Captain. And your friend of my grandson's is mine too. I don't stand there with your mouths open. Come on. <laughs> Here, Sam, have some more iced tea. Would you like some more, too, Captain? Oh, thank you. Uh, I would. Well, here's to our health. Health? How long have you uh, been here, Grandmother? Ever since I died. What? Don't look like that. I said ever since I died, 30 years ago. Sam. Who are we to question what happens? What's living, anyway? All I know is I'm alive again and no questions asked. Here, Captain Field. Go ahead, feel my arm. Solid, isn't it? You hear my voice, don't you? You hear it, don't you, Captain? Yes, yes, I hear it. Grandmother... Well, then I... why go around questioning? Well, it's just that we... Well, I... I never thought I'd see you again, Grandmother. Mrs. Hingston... Yes, some more iced tea, Captain. Oh, no, no. Uh, I just want to ask you a question. Mrs. Hingston, is Mars... Heaven? Nonsense. No. It's a world, and we get a second chance. It's like another Earth. How do we know there wasn't one before Earth? <laughs> That's a good question, John. Well, uh, well, maybe we better get back to the ship, Sam. It's been nice, Mrs. Hingston. Thanks for the drink. You'll be back, of course. For supper, I mean. We're having fried chicken Wait and mashed potatoes. Wait a minute. What's, what's that? Excuse me, Mrs. Hingston. Sam? Sam, come here. Hey, well, what do you know, John? A parade with a brass band. But the crew, my crew marching behind the band with all those people. But they're heroes. These people are welcome to those heroes. The abandoned ship, they had orders. I'll court-martial every one of them. Oh, John, listen to me. They found all relatives and friends, just like I have. They had their orders. What would you have done? Obeyed orders. I... I... What's the matter? Sam. Sam, I don't believe it. It's impossible. John, they said I would find you here. Phyllis. Of course, darling. Phyllis. Of course. Who did you think it was? This is Phyllis, Sam. My, my... Ten years ago. After that, I never got married. We're waiting for you. Uh, Your mother and father. They're alive? Waiting for you. At your old house on Maple Avenue. You, you heard that, Sam, didn't you? This is Phyllis talking. And she said mother and dad and the house... You understand it now, the crew. Same thing has happened to them. Yes. Yes. When I open my eyes, it'll all be gone. Phyllis will be gone. Open them, John. Phyllis. Phyllis. Oh, my darling. My darling. Good to see you children dancing together again. Your mother would have enjoyed it so much, John. <laughs> I must have worn her out with all my questions. Don't worry about it, son. She'll get a good rest tonight. Then in the morning, the days after, we have so much time now, son. We'll all be together. You and Phyllis, your mother and I, so much time. Yes, yes. Oh, don't go away from me, John. Hold me closer. Oh, I've dreamed so long of dancing with you. But I... No, 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 no. No more questions. Just accept it. That your mother and father were once dead and are now alive. That I was killed 
Ten years ago, I was killed in a horrible accident. And now, now I'm alive and in your arms. Oh, tight, John, hold me tight. I think I'll run along to bed now. You children won't forget to turn out the lights. Well, you know what to do. Good night, Phyllis. Good night, Father Black. Good night, son. Good night, Dad. Shall we go out on the back porch, John? Like we used to long ago. Come with me, John. Here. Let's sit here on the steps. Remember that grape arbor? You built it. Oh, I remember you hit your thumb with a hammer, and I cried. You're very silent, John. Is anything wrong? Phyllis, I've just had a crazy notion. Suppose this were Mars. But it isn't. Uh, humor me, Phyllis. Suppose it were Mars. And the Martians saw our ship coming and saw us inside our ship and hated us, and they wanted to destroy us, but in a very clever way. Yes? Well, what would be the best weapon a Martian could use against us with our atomic bombs, our hydrogen? John... No, let, let me finish. The hypothesis is interesting. The Martians would use telepathy, hypnosis, memory, imagination. Oh, John, don't question us anymore. No more. Look, suppose this town is some other shape, a Martian shape. But by playing on my memory and my desires and my wants, they've made it what I've wanted it to be. Yes. I suppose my mother and father weren't that at all. But two Martians, incredibly brilliant, keeping me under this dreaming hypnosis as other Martians have done it to my men, to Sam. But me, you've had your arms around me. You've kissed me. We shared old secrets. Was that a Martian hypnosis, John? Phyllis. Yes, what is it, John? Where are you going? I've got to talk to Sam. I've got to find out what he thinks now that he's alone with his grandmother. Stay here with me, John. Well, I've got to talk to Sam. Maybe he's beginning to wonder, too. You're not going anywhere, John. Phyllis! <laughs> Phyllis, no! You... You're not Phyllis! <laughs> I was right. You're not. You're not. Friends, friends, comrades, fellow Martians, this is a great day for Mars, a day of great rejoicing. As number one of quadrant three two seven B of Sector Q, it is my proud privilege to read to you this message from the Planetary All High. It says, congratulations on your splendid work in meeting the barbarian invaders and atomizing them. You have proven the complete efficiency of Plan A, and hereafter, mass hypnosis will become standard operating procedure in repelling any further invasion from outer space, be they sub-Martian from Earth or any other creature from any other planet. Well done. <laughs> I can add little to this unstinted praise from the all high, but I would like to point out to you that what you have accomplished could not have been done had it not been for our space heroes who have risked so much and often given all in recent years to keep the planet Earth under close surveillance. This surveillance, as you know, has been accomplished by our space patrols, known to Earthmen as flying saucers. Ah, they were courageous, these Earth creatures, to brave space in that crude ship. But they were inferior beings, and therefore they had to be atomized. Their extinction was necessary to ensure our way of life. Yet perhaps, since this has been your first encounter with creatures from outer space, you, 
You whose glorious victory this has been may want to say something. Is there anyone who wants to say something? You? Uh, well, uh, yes, yes. Uh, it was a very interesting experience. He said his name was John Black. Uh, he was a nice young being. Nice. <laughs> he, he thought I was his father, whatever that is. Uh, uh, I guess that's all I want to say. And you? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Well, I thought of something, but I forgot. I see. And you? One of them asked me if Mars was heaven. What's heaven? I don't know. Now for the business at hand. The ship, the ship they came in. The destruction of it. Disintegrator squad. Ready. Proceed. Compressed charge. 16 atmospheres. Charges compressed. Low velocity. Trajectory two. Low velocity. Trajectory two. Release. Charge. The ship they came in, it's gone. Motorists, did you ever consider that taking care of a car is something like caring for a baby? It's easier when you've got a system. And in caring for your car, the Richfield gasoline dealer has a system. It's called Richfield All Point Safety Service. Have the Richfield dealer service your car tomorrow because hot weather is hard on lubricants. Wear and sudden breakdown can occur before you realize there's anything wrong. With All Point service, the Richfield dealer will change your oil to fresh, rich lube, all-weather motor oil and give your car a careful All Point lubrication job. Chassis, differential, front wheels, and transmission. And that includes service of automatic transmissions with the new Richfield automatic transmission fluid. Richfield All Point safety service also includes inspection and, and care of all the likely trouble spots, such as battery, spark plugs, tires, and radiator. So save time, save money with this one-stop service. Get warm weather protection for your car now with Richfield All Point Safety Service. Look for the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robson. And tonight has presented Mars is Heaven by Ray Bradbury. Adapted for radio by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. Featured in the cast were Jeff Corey as Captain Black, Florence Bates as the grandmother, Bill Johnstone as Dr. Hingston, Walter Catlett as number one of Mars, Elizabeth Root as Phyllis, Paul Fries as Peter Lustig, Ian Wolfe as the father, and Stuart Novens, who played himself. Also heard were Ruth Parrott and Ben Wright. Special music arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week... You're standing on the floor of the ocean, pronging up a fortune in sponges. But moving closer and closer to you, his huge sponge hook raised to rip open your diving suit, is a man from whom there is no escape. Next week at this time, the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York invites you to escape with an exciting story about sponge fishers in the Gulf of Mexico, as John and Gwen Bagney tell it in The Big Sponge. Be listening. Goodbye then until the same time next week when once again we offer you Escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.